good morning. Now, we all want to, to continue to come down the plots and to work out that. I've got to apologise for the wind today, it's quite brisk. Um, one of the pinch points for possible cross contamination, the first one, is that. So once you're getting in there and you've, uh, you've, you've let yourself onto the plot, make sure you've got some of that or you've got some sort of other disinfectant wipe that you can use because if people are touching that and you're touching that if one of you has got it you can pass it on so that's one of the pinch points so gel up afterwards if you can get hold of the gel stop touching your face like I do as well um, so once you've gelled your hands you know that the, that the bugs have been dealt with in that location what I do as well is on here got a little bit of a spritzer it's what I was using to clean down the uh, the greenhouse with which is that stuff on the back of it it does say now these are bacterial ones so you've got E. coli, Listeria, Salmonella MRSA and it kills the H1N1 flu virus so it's probably going to be pretty useful against uh, COVID-19 as well. All right, it does say on the back of it there. You can make that out at the top. So any things like that, handles and stuff, because it's only me that's coming down. I have told them, we all, we've all spoken together, uh, me and the boys and the girls, about um, sticking to our own plots now. Okay. So if we're sticking to our own plots and um, we can still talk to each other over the fence and what have you keeping about nine feet of a distance then that's the way forward the sort of collaborative working together building projects kind of stuff is going to be it's going to have to be put on hold for a little bit um, just get inside without this breeze um so yeah i'll show you as well there's a there's a wash station so once I've come on, I've gelled up, I'll have a bit of a wash. So that includes boiling the kettle up there. So I'll boil the kettle up. Um, I'm lucky because I've got that, but if not, you've got your stove there. You need to get hold of a stove. Um, boil the kettle up, make yourself a flask for the day or for the morning, because we're only allowed on for about three hours now at a, at a time. And that's our own rules our own plot rules so boil the kettle up make the brew and also you can have a good wash of your hands i, I have a shower i've had a shower before i've come down here um but with you having the kettle you can actually make, make yourself a little wash station wash station which which i have and you can see that here so that's the little wash station so a bit of the boiling water goes in there i've got a pan scrubber I've got the anti-vac there, so a few sprays of the anti-vac goes into there, a few sprays of the anti-vac goes onto my hands and I, I rub it in as though I would do with uh, liquid soap, yeah, and then spend a good 20 seconds then washing and scrubbing your hands, you know that they're clean, you've got that there so you've sprayed your, a few other points of contact, and because there's only you going on, let's get back inside this bloody wind, because there's only you coming on, you should be fine there for cross contamination with your paws. All right, that's my little bit. Anyway, that's uh, that's what I I can do. But as, it, it just increase your general cleanliness and your general hygiene. It can't hurt, can it? Okay. Right. See you in a bit. Nice and clean. That's what you want. So yeah, keep yourself clean, uh, spritz the surfaces that you're touching, the main ones that you're touching on your route in and out of the allotment, uh, and then we're all doing our bit to keep everybody as safe as we can. It's windy again today, which is annoying me. I hate the bloody wind, icy chilly wind coming through. We'll probably have another beast from the east just to put the cherry on the frigging cake with all of this, won't we? Uh, but I'm going to crack on today. I'm going to get these, um, uh, the, the sides 
sorted out um, with the feather edge. So I'm going to be building a little bit more framing around there, which I'll show you in a bit, and get this sorted out. So I'm going to try and get this boxed off if I can before. I hope it doesn't happen, but before the lockdown, it's locking itself down, this thing. It's locking me in. I'm going to sort that out. There's lots of things to sort out, isn't there, at the moment? Um, but we've got to concentrate on the on, on the stuff that really matters, and that's to keep yourself healthy and and look after other people as well. Stu put one up last night. Petals on the paving slabs. Stu, I think it was last night he put it up, and he was talking about that kind of thing, um, looking out for each other, and um, and keeping the plots going, keeping the allotments going as much as we can but we've got to be very very sensible about it if we want to keep our allotments and keep the ability to come down to these allotments feasible then in order to do that we've all got to do our little bit to make sure that we're not um, we're not spreading this uh, this disease we're containing it and minimizing it reducing the risks from it as much as we possibly can so we've got to do that Dog walkers, people with cats, okay? If you're walking your dog, keep your dog on its lead. And the reason for that is, if you've got a dog that you've coughed on, it takes two weeks to show itself this disease, by the way. If you've got a dog that um, you've been stroking, you've been coughing on it, you take that dog out, let it off the lead. What's it going to do? It's going to play with the other dogs. It's going to toy fight with the other dogs. It's going to interact physically with the other dogs. If the viral um, pathogens or whatever they're called are on the are on the dog's fur, they can stay on the dog's fur for up to 72 hours. So that gets transferred then onto the other dog. The owner comes, he strokes his dog. He might be stroking your dog. Don't do it for the time being. Apparently the dogs can get a version of this that doesn't get transferred onto the humans through coughing and stuff like that. But if your germs or the human germs, the human uh, viral pathogens, are on the dog, you're going to get it off the dog, aren't you? Same with the cats. If you let the cats out, the cat will go out, interact with other cats. The same situation, you're stroking the cat, coughing on the bloody cat. Think about that. There was a virologist on the other night, I think it was last night, he was on um, talking about this. Keep the dogs on your, on the lead so that they don't do that. Keep your social distance again. It's common sense that, but people aren't doing it. I don't want to rant about it, but we're all in this together, boys and girls. Think about stuff like that. Okay, going forward now, follow the government advice as you should do. And there you go. All right. End of rant.